video, we're going back over Chris Pollock's Evil Dead 2 race top. If you don't know what I'm talking about, refer to the last video. It was everything just raw. It has now been painted. I will go over that and some other details that uh, Chris left out on this video and also different options you can do when making an Evil Dead 2 race top chainsaw. Uh, first and foremost, I just want to say I understand why Bruce Campbell did not like wearing these because the top on these are, it's just welded steel. This is welded steel, that's what it did in Evil Dead 2, which was used in Army Darkness. And it's super heavy, it's a tank, so I do understand. So if you're watching Evil Dead 2 or Army Darkness, just to let you know the tops are not resin or anything like that, or anything to that aspect. It is a solid steel welded top. And what Chris did is he found the proper gauge steel, bent it, welded it, did it properly, and uh, made it right. And it's a great piece to have. It's not something I'm gonna wear all the time because it is super heavy. It's probably as close as possible to the weight of the one used in Evil Dead 2. Uh, so, with that being said, let's go over this beautiful chainsaw. So, the first thing you're gonna notice is the thickness right here of this aluminum. This is correct, Evil Dead 2. Army of Darkness, there was a handle that is thinner, but still in Army of Darkness, you will find this thicker one. So you have options when you're doing Army of Darkness. Evil Dead 2, uh, this handle was also seen on the flat top, which was converted to a raised top. Let me turn it around. <sighs> because of this. You can see that in the build scene with the flat top. Uh, Chris put this in specifically to make it look correct to the scene. The last video, Chris did go over that this is seen on the race top, which he is 100% correct. It is on a race top, but also this is on a race top. You will see it like this, especially in Army Darkness cut down. And you will see it actually backwards when he's plunging the chainsaw into Henrietta's body, but it's bent up or bent in outwards like that. Not cut down or anything, just in its natural form. So it is backwards on a race top. The only, only other time you find this backwards, but straight, is when he's getting sucked out of the cabin through the portal, but he's actually wearing a flat top with a horizontal handle. This one has a vertical handle. So a lot of people have told me that the one where he gets sucked out is a, ver or a raised top, but it's not. His hand is actually pushing the metal up. Now, when it comes to the paint, Chris likes it. I like it. A lot of other people like it. And uh, let me go over it. Now, what you got to do is try to do a really crappy paint job. <laughs> That's kind of what they did. Basically, what they did is they used a different color red from the natural home light color and kind of sprayed it on there. They didn't seal it or anything. So when you see it in the Mystic Museum now, because you will see that other red, what it does over time, it actually gets darker. If you don't seal it, it will get darker. It depends on what you want to do. If you want something to somewhat resemble Army of Darkness later, you want to just leave it as is. If not, you want to seal it. So what this color is, this is a colonial red, and you will see scenes in Evil Dead 2 where it's like this, especially when it's cutting out the cellar, uh, cellar door, or when he gets attacked by Henrietta and he falls down in the cellar on the ground. You'll see that defined line and somewhat darkened in, not much. This side, this side right here, this is the natural home light color. You wanna keep that on there. Um, this side has a lot of black into it. Uh, when it comes to the tabs, I did leave the silver right here, but of course when sealing it, it kind of dulls it down a bit. So that's why that's like that. Let's go to this side right here. You can see the two-tone, the natural home light color. I did not repaint these entire bodies red. I left it the natural home light color to get the right look. But you can see the crappy spray job and darkened in with just a little dry brush of black. This one does have the hanging pull cord. The reason why they put a knot into it is not just because of the build scene, it's because of when Ash picks the chainsaw up and pulls the pull cord with his teeth, 
that cut his evil hand off. So that's where they left it hanging there. But also, if you see, uh, when he comes out of the cellar, when he's, uh, after he was attacked by Henrietta, it is hanging, but it is also tight as well whenever he cuts her head off. So if you wanna do a tight version on the race top, you can. You can leave it hanging like this, it's kind of up to you. Let's look at the top, right there with the paint. There's some silver details, especially on this side right here. Really can't see in this light, but you can see that silver right there. He already went over the tabs in the last video. I'll refer back to that if you're wondering about that. This is his grill. It's actually just a darkened in silver because it wasn't like black, black, but it was black, you know, or you know what I mean. It's it's how it's perceived on film because he really saturated the uh, the video and also darkened everything up. So Chris has gone over that with me and he's like, it's just really darkened in silver. And that's what I did there. Um, with this look here, you have options. I did the dripping look. You will see that on the working chainsaw on AOD and also this handle right here in AOD and the working chainsaw, the one that's actually falling through the sky into the pit. And what they did is they didn't seal anything up and they didn't have paint back then that worked well with plastic. So it, by the time it hit AOD, which is Army of Darkness, everything started getting chipped up and messed up. And that's why when you see the Mystic Museum now that this colonial red is super dark. If you don't seal it, it will go super dark. My AOD's chainsaw, I didn't seal that until about two months ago. It's super dark. So, there we go with that. Like I said, I am not sealing that up yet because um, I haven't finished the paint on there. When it comes to the front, you have options here because whenever this is on the ground after it gets attacked by Henrietta in the cellar, it is a bent top. Now when he comes out of the cellar, this is a welded front. So what they did is they just built everything, they bolted the front on there and just put like a weld right there. So you have options, you can do this or you can do a separate front that's just a little weld right here. Uh, one thing that dr is driving me nuts with this is this bolt right here. I didn't leave it long enough. It should just be a little bit longer, about like two millimeters extended, but it's already like Loctite really tight in there. So I'm gonna wait till it kind of wears out before I change that, if I decide to change that. Also with the clamp is placed back here, you will really see that when it's on the ground, whenever uh, Ash gets attacked by Henrietta, gets thrown through the stairs. So it's in the right placement for that. So when you see it like wobbling and running. So you can see some of the natural home light colors out throughout here. So if I was going to put this under different lighting, you will see the differences. Like uh, Chris sent me a photo the other day saying, oh, you got it pretty close. And I'm very honored with that. Another thing is you will see this bend right here. And Chris is 100% correct with that because the way that you would fix these, this bent top, is they'd unbolt from back here and all production would do is pull it up and do whatever they need to on the inside and they would pull it back down. I remember that from when I was a kid, they would do that in AOD as well with the bent top. I weathered out the pull cord handle a little bit more. I mean, I could do a little bit more, but I kind of dig where it's at right now. When it comes to the bar, I went with the straight black look because um, he actually had to modify this bar specifically and change where the hole's at. When you watch the scene very closely when he's getting attacked uh, by the evil in the flesh and you catch it right at the right moment when the lightning strikes, you will notice that it is kind of a worn down black with the natural bar color. Problem is with a modified bar like this, I can't really get that proper look, but straight black, is correct as well, especially when he's cutting up the cellar door. So both is correct. And this chainsaw bar is right because it has this kick up. This is actually a Craftsman bar. There's different brands that have made it. Homelight um, may have made it. 
Oregon made one at one point, but it has this kick up in the front. You will see that, especially on the build scene. So Chris went over that a little bit on the last video. Let's turn it back over. When it comes to this part right here, you do have to have washers behind the bolts. You do have to have that. And this bar right here is a proper piece. What they were trying to do is open it up a lot more for Bruce Campbell to put his hand in. That's really what that was for. When they would put this on Bruce's hand, they'd actually put the clamp on his wrist. Then he would put his hand through the chainsaw and he had somebody there who would actually bolt it back together. Let's look at the bottom. You can see a little bit of black. You can see a little bit of that darker colonial red. You'll notice a hex bolt up here. Another flathead bolt down there. They did that for the brackets. For the film. No backing on this one. You can see it right through it because they didn't really put a backing on it. They, like I said, they just threw it together. You can see Chris's handle over there. What they did originally is just a wooden dowel right through the middle. It's really what they did. But I really dig this chainsaw. And I like the contrast of the natural home light red to the other red. And like I said, if you want to keep that look, you need to seal it up. I've lost a lot of like the nice shiny parts of it where it wasn't painted which the natural home light plastic was like a shiny color but if i didn't do it it would chip up and it would uh look more aod and that's not what i was going for so i wanted to make sure i had something in my collection that would stay evil dead too so with everything done to this this is just an amazing piece and if chris is selling these you need to contact him he's on the knights of samaria page and on the ghost meters page and this is his grill as well like i said before it's just an amazing chainsaw so with everything done with this i still have to finish this up and it'll uh, be in my collection this is something i'm not selling i'm not, i'm not building these things it's something that chris is doing i am not taking commissions to paint anything I mean, it's a good paint job. I wouldn't say it's 100%, but it's as best as I can get it. Because you got to remember, it's, it's harder to recreate something that's messed up than something that's perfect. It's easy to get something perfectly done than try to rebuild somebody's rush job, especially with paint. Um, and Chris told me the troubles he had with recreating this, how painstaking it was. And I believe him. I remember he was, he's been working on this for a couple of years. So I'm very happy with this. I want to thank Chris Polk again. He actually gifted me this. So amazing. I want to thank him again for that. Something that will never leave my collection, never sell on this. And if you're interested in one, you got to talk to Chris Pollock because I am not building these things. Or if you're looking for parts for Evil Dead 2, Chris Pollock is still your number one source to get the best stuff. And this clamp is 100% metal. It is not resin. Nothing is resin on it. Everything is correct to what they would have used on Evil Dead 2. Even though this is a recreation, he recreated it perfectly. So with that being said, guys, if you have any questions for me on the paint or anything like that, just hit me up in the comments. And uh, until next time, you guys stay groovy.